the human logic. Just 500 years ago, most of Europe was convinced the earth was flat. They didn't know that the Quran had already said it was round 1,400 years ago. But what about 2,000 years ago? What did the people think about the earth? Human logic, you look straight out and the earth looks flat. You don't really see the curve, do you? No, you don't. So how far can you go with human logic? And stop and think about this. According to our logic, if we had to use just this and not know some of the scientific discoveries, there are a lot of things that, well, just wouldn't work. I remember, okay, for instance, when I was going to school many years ago, they told us according to the aerodynamics of the bee. Now, we're talking about a honeybee, you know, zzz, little bee, right? Nahl, they call him in Arabic. And this little guy, he's kind of fat, kind of big, and he has tiny wings on him. And they said, according to their logic, according to the aerodynamics that they understood of flight, the bee can't fly. I said, the bee can't fly. I was a little boy. I was thinking, the bee can't fly according to your books, according to your teaching, according to your aerodynamic design. A bee can't fly. I said, it's a good thing the bee can't read because if he read the book and found out he couldn't fly, he'd have to walk to all of the flowers. <laughs> Human logic? Human logic is nothing more than a reflection of the current mode of thought of the day. People at the time of Plato and Socrates and the great thinkers of old also thought that they knew everything there was to know about everything. But if you want to insist on human logic, I will allow that in our conversation simply because it's logical. And at the same time, I'm going to ask you a question. Who is it, in fact, in the very beginning that came out with this concept of logic anyway? Human logic, the brain, the way we rationalize things, the way we understand things came about from who? The very people I just mentioned. Socrates, Plato, those thinkers. And guess what? You want to accept that? Do you accept it? Yes, yeah, they came out. They were the great thinkers. They were the great theologians. Good. Did you know that each and every one of them came to the conclusion there is God? So you want to talk about that? Well, they said it. The people that you're thinking are so great, so brainy, so brilliant. According to their rules of testable evidence, God exists. Now what are you going to say now? So it wouldn't be logical now for you to deny that, would it? If you're going to say I use logic, well, logic says God exists. Now what are you going to say? I recall that there was an incident of a professor who insisted to his students, there's no God. He kept saying, there's no God, there's no God. And when they said, why? Because most of them, they believe some were Jewish, some were Christian, some were Muslims. He said, if I don't see it, if I don't hear it, if I can't feel it, if I can't taste it, if I can't smell it, it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, I don't believe in it. It's as simple as that. One of the students tried to argue with him about it. He was saying, well, God is something beyond that. You have to have faith. You have to believe. And he said, why? Why should I believe? How? How? The boy said, well, I don't know, but we just have to believe. He said, sit down. Another boy stood up and he said, listen, as Muslims, you know, we believe, but we have proof at the same time. He said, proof? What proof do you have? He said, by knowing what God has done and what he's doing, we know he exists. 